So I can sing and preach as much as I want, right? All right, let's go home. <laughs> I'm kidding. I drove a long way to be here. I come to worship the Lord tonight. Are you ready to worship him? Amen. Brother, give me that volume back in this microphone if you don't care. Thank you. Appreciate that. Amen. There we go. You pray for me and I'll pray for you. We'll get through this. Amen. Amen. Hear the sound of angels from across the distant hill. I hear them calling me away. Old friends now are gathered outside my mansion door. And I can feel the earth start to fall away. So I made my reservation for my final destination. And I'm changing my location to a man. In the sky, gonna wear me some new clothes like a shiny white robe. Walk around in new shoes, getting ready to move. Amen. Ready to move. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the marriage supper's ready, and they've been me come and die. I'm going to sit right down at the table with the king. I can see David's making ready his golden harp to play. I can hardly wait to hear those angels sing. So I made my reservation for my final destination. And I'm changing my location to a mansion in the sky. Gonna wear me some new clothes like a shiny white robe. Walk around in new shoes, getting ready to move. Ready to move. How many are anxious to get out of here? I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I made my reservation for my final destination. And I'm changing my location to a mansion in the sky. Gonna wear me some new clothes like a shiny white robe. Walk around in new shoes. Getting ready to move. Hallelujah. I had a request, but I'm going to go ahead and sing anyway. Um, I'm kidding. This is, this is for Carlos tonight. Amen. A little bit more mic, brother. Thank you. In a stable in Bethlehem was born the king <laughs> of all men and to the shepherds heaven's host proclaim peace to all men in Jesus name it's the greatest story ever told it can't be bought and it can't be sold it brings to life the darkest sin then he sets us free to live again amen hallelujah standing by the water Jordan stream John said behold the lamb and coming forth from beneath that flow the spirit on dove's wings on him abode then from a cloud <laughs> God's voice did speak 
He said, this is my son <laughs> in whom I'm pleased. Then he healed the sick, the blind, the lame, but he did it not for glory or fame. He taught us love, joy, and peace. Us the way sin to relieve. Then on the cross at Calvary, that's where my Jesus gave his life for me. He bled and died. That I to give then at the tomb on that third day that's where Mary found that stone rolled away why seek ye the living among the dead the angel said Hallelujah. Just like he said. Amen. Woo. Then on a mountain after 40 days, 500 watched as he flew away. Two men stood by. Jesus, thank you, Lord. He's coming back someday. It's the greatest story ever told. It can't be Bob, and it can't be sold. It brings to light the darkest sin. But thank God it sets us free to live again. It's the greatest story. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good tonight, and I, I'm on the way all throughout. The, bless your heart. You go right ahead, brother. All throughout the day, that I just had songs of heaven come to my mind, and I thought that would be a great theme tonight to sing songs about heaven. That first song, New Shoes, that's as old as I am. It's over almost 50 years old, that song is. And I uh, just want to sing you a, couple, a few more songs before I preach about heaven. I. Thank God we have a better place to go. And as they sang last night, this world isn't our home. We're just, just passing through, aren't we? We're strangers. We're pilgrims. And we shouldn't feel comfortable here. We should feel out of place. But thank God there's coming a day where we won't feel out of place. We'll feel home. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. me that old time religion the one that has conviction the same kind that the old timers had the kind when they sang they shouted and when they prayed nobody doubted the same kind that was lived by my mom and dad give me that old time salvation from Genesis to Revelation That'll save you out of a dying world that's lost I want the kind I can not only live by But the kind I can also die by The pure kind that was paid for on the cross 
At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light was the song they were singing when I knelt at the altar that night. I stayed and I prayed until the Spirit saved my soul. I have the old time religion now. Heaven is my goal. Amen. Give me that old time religion. They began to sing. It was good enough for my mom and dad, and it was good enough for me. They made a joyful noise, clapped their hands and raised their voice. When the old-time preacher began to preach, he read from the word he told us. Return to the path he showed us, and you shall find rest for your soul. To walk therein is a good way. It'll lead you through the straight gate, and you shall live on the ages of old. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light was the song they were singing. When I knelt at the altar that night, I stayed and I prayed until the Spirit saved my soul. I had the old-time religion now. Heaven is my goal. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw. Aren't you glad for the cross tonight? Hallelujah. When I knelt at the altar that night, I stayed and I prayed until the Spirit saved my soul. I have the old-time religion now. Heaven is my goal. I have the old-time religion now. Heaven is my goal. Those guys didn't know when to stop. I knew when to stop. They didn't. Hey, Amen. Sing one more. Uh, brother, just a little bit more in the monitor on this mic. You know how to do that? Praise God. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Amen. been living in this world for quite a long time always looking for a place to call my home see I've never been satisfied with what I saw here so I move in to my brand new home and this is an address change notification soon I'm moving <laughs> to a much better place amen are you ready to move <laughs> there'll be no tears no sorrow to tell you of my address change now this new world where I'm going it's lovely and new <laughs> there's a river that flows like crystal there's walls of jasper too listen and the street in front of my house it's made of purest gold <laughs> it's a place where we'll never grow old i'm glad i'm going this is an address change notification soon i'm moving to a much better before 
it feels it's awful in it go from one place to the next all the stuff you got to carry with you but thank god there's a day coming when i'm leaving it all behind this is to tell you of my address change what a day that sing it with me when my jesus i shall see glad I'm going, aren't you? Amen. Well, four of you are. Amen. <laughs> How about the rest of you? You glad you're going to heaven? Amen. Yeah, we are going. So thankful, again, just to be here and thank you for just this wonderful opportunity. What a, just the presence of the Lord was so wonderful last night. And, and it's, this, is a, this is already open. Is this mine? It, it, ain't, it ain't, definitely ain't mine. I didn't open it. Someone get me a water. You don't care. Yeah. What? But it's, it's already open. Did I drink out of it already? Oh, well. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I drank out of it. I don't know how I knew that after I drank out of it, but we're good. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We get our, we, we got to laugh. If, if I didn't laugh in church, I wouldn't laugh anywhere. But that's pretty much where we're at all the time. I'm glad, I'm glad God gives us a sense of humor. I'm glad he has to have a sense of humor. Amen. <laughs> Taking care of us on a daily basis. Uh, it, is, it is good, again, to be back. And, and uh, Sarah, Sarah Stone, she goes to our church. And, and she came and she, I'm, she's a lot closer here than she, when she comes to Rubyville. So she said, I'm going to go visit you all down there so i really appreciate that and at levi nelson you all know levi he um with mike and Teresa, and he drove me down tonight i appreciate that and uh we haven't yet made a a formal announcement yet but uh evangelistic outreach just hired levi uh to be part of our ministry staff and uh we thank god for that and uh, we have uh just been praying for a long, long time about someone to be able to come in um, that can just uh, help us in all aspects of ministry. And I don't know of any better young man in all the world that loves the Lord with all of his heart than Levi Nelson. And I would say that even if he wasn't sitting here. But we're so thankful God led him our way. And he'll be doing a number of different things, mainly taking care of a lot of the technical side of, of uh, the video and, and audio and that I've been taking care of since 2001. And we're going to kind of transition uh, him into that. And so we'll be able to, we, we, don't, we don't hire someone to do less. We hire someone so we can do more. Amen. And that's, there's only so much two people can do, uh, two men, you know, myself and Calvin Ray. But then we got a staff, of course, of his sisters. But there's only so much that we can do by ourselves. But we want to be able to reach as many as we can. I don't know if you know this, but Jesus is coming back. Amen. And so we need to be doing all we can, Amen. redeeming the time. And doing all we can to reach people for Jesus. Yeah. And just so thankful. Tyron Page, good to have you. Be, Tyron will be here tomorrow night with the Bakers. And they'll be singing tomorrow night, Lord willing. So we're looking for that. Yep. 
I got to tell you something funny. Can I tell you something funny that happened last night after church? I kind of set up everything, just kind of make sure everything was working right. Scott was helping me out. And, and so we, we were walking out, and me and Scott and Sherry, we just loved to cut up. And, and I, I know he's, he, they would love to be able to be here. And of course, he's you know, committed at other places as well. A lot going on this week getting there, around this area. And so uh, we were walking out last night. And he said, man, you know, I've got to be down in Carter County. And, and so I said, that's, that's fine, I understand. He said, but at least I got to come on the best night. And, <laughs> and, and I, I just said, oh, yeah, that's great, yeah. And, and uh, so I got in my truck, and he pulled up beside me, and he said, brother, that didn't come out no way what I intended it. <laughs> I guess Sherry got old him and said, do you not know what you just said to him? He's singing tomorrow night. You just said, we got to come at the best night. And I was like, boy, I hope it's as good as it was tonight as it was last night. Definitely wasn't near as good as singing. My land, what, what tremendous singing from the Yates family. And uh, just honored to be. I love coming down here to Hickory Grove because I don't have to worry about much of a playlist. You all tell me what you want to hear. Uh, and I didn't have I Choose the Lord or I would have I sang that tonight. That's our song in it down here. So uh, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Philippians, please. The book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read one verse. We're going to hit uh, several verses there in Philippians 4, beginning in verse 11. But I want to read verse 19 just for the sake of time. Very familiar passage of Scripture. You all can quote it. No doubt you have quoted it to yourself, to your friends and family. I've quoted it several different times. Because all of us at one time or another will come to a point where we have a need in our life, right? And this word always gives us a promise. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm using for a title, if you will, verse 19, the first three, actually the first four words, but my God shall what we're going to preach on tonight, but my God shall. Uh, the Philippian church was a, was a tiny church, a little church, but they were a huge blessing to the Apostle Paul. Um, Paul, uh, on his second missionary journey, um, was able to visit that church and be able to establish that church. And um, whenever Paul, Paul wrote this letter to the church of Philippi, while he was in jail. And while he was in bonds and slavery and, and bondage and darkness, and while he was there, the church of Philippi sent a gift to him. And they sent it by a man by the name of Epaphrodites. And Epaphrodites came to Paul and he took care of Paul while he was in jail. And he was able to, um, to take care of him, but while Epaphrodites uh, was there he became very ill and so he wrote this letter back to the church at Philippi uh, to not only tell them of what had happened but also to tell them of the thanksgiving and to give not only thanksgiving to the church of Philippi but also to God for allowing their ministry paths to cross so this church even though they were small in number they were a huge impact in Paul's ministry life. And in, in chapter 4, he kind of surmises everything. And then he starts talking about, in verse 10, he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. And I want you to notice what he said. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Paul was saying, I've learned some valuable lessons while I've been in jail. I've learned some valuable lessons in my years of ministry. And I've learned one thing, and this is it. My God shall satisfy. He said, I've learned in whatever state I'm in, therewith to be content. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I am never satisfied with how much I do for the Lord. Um, I, 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 I try my best to do all I can, and I try my best to give my best. 
But even at that, I'm still a man at best, and I still fall short. And we all fall short, don't we? At least I feel like I fall short. Of all God's done for me, I, I fail miserably to give back to Him what He's done for me. And even though I'm never satisfied with, with what I do for Him, I'm extremely satisfied with what God does for me. <laughs> I am satisfied in Him. I am satisfied in being His child. I may not always have a good day. Uh, someday, I mentioned yesterday, every, some days, every day is like Monday, right? Uh, just, just things don't fall into place. Uh, things just aren't doing right. You lose your keys. You lose your wallet. And you find out there and we're in the same spot where you left them. You know, it just, it's just the way things go. Your house gets infested with Asian beetles like mine has the last two nights. And you got to clean them off. Spend hours cleaning them off your, your blinds and stuff like that. It's just awful. You don't, sometimes you don't have a good day. But even though I don't have a good day, it doesn't take away the fact that I'm satisfied with what God's done for me. We have no problem praising the Lord when things are good. But when things aren't going as well as you would like them to, how's your praise working then? God says in everything, in every state you're in, you should be satisfied with what I've done for you. No, we don't always have a good days, but thank God we serve a good God, don't we? Yeah. Paul said, whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. Now, I want you to understand something. Contentment is not getting what you want. It's receiving what God sends your way. I'm going to say that again. Contentment is not getting what you want. That's selfish. Contentment is not getting what you want. Contentment is receiving what God sends your way. No matter what God allows for, to happen in your life, no matter what He sends down your road, you learn to be content with whatever you receive. Listen, you have to understand that whatever God sends our way, it always passes through His desk before it gets to our lap. And so whatever happens, know that there's a purpose attached with that. And so every trial, every storm, every, every circumstance we go through, there's always a purpose attached to that storm. There's always a purpose attached to that trial. And we have to learn to be content and to be satisfied that God's going to bring you through, that all things will work together for good. Amen. Amen. He goes on to say in verse 12, I, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Now that word abased, that's not a word we use very often. I never heard anybody say that lately. But that word abased simply means to tighten the belt. He said, I've learned how to tighten the belt and I know how to handle blessings. That's what he said. He said, in the lean times, I've learned how to be satisfied with what I have. Yeah. And in times of blessing, I've learned how to live with the blessing and not let it get to my head and think that I had anything to do with it. Right. Every good gift and every perfect gift coming from the Father above. And everything we have, it comes from the hand of God. And when you understand that, and when you understand that everything you have is just on loan from the Savior, bless God, you can be content in knowing that anything, you'll never go without. You'll never go without uh, shelter. You'll never go without food. As long as the Lord entrusted Him, He will provide. He will satisfy. Amen. What, how, how could he do that? How could he be content? It's because Paul learned the secret to contentment. The secret to contentment is not putting value in things. It's putting value in the one who gave you the things. <laughs> See, because if we put our value in our house, if we put our value in our, and if we're content because we have these things, those things can be gone tomorrow. But if we put our contentment and we are satisfied with God, we can lose everything we have, but yet we can still lift our hands because we still have the Lord. And when we have the Lord, that's all we need. Hallelujah. 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 That's why people often wonder how you can make it and still going through all the stuff you're going through. I'll tell you how you're making it. I'll tell you how you're able to get up. I'll tell you how you're able to come to church whenever you're feeling bad because you're satisfied with God. Amen. Songwriter put it this way, all my life long I had panted for a drink from some cool stream 
that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst that I felt within. And feeding on the husk around me till my strength was almost gone, longed my soul for something better, only still to hunger on. Oh, but hallelujah, I have found him who my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longing, and through his blood I now am saved. I'm thankful long, long time ago, as a five-year-old boy, I found satisfaction in the fact that my God can satisfy me. He can take care of me. He can save me. And hallelujah, I found him. Hallelujah. Not only will he satisfy, but if we move down to verse 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. How many of you ever heard that one before? Yeah. How many of you ever seen it on football helmets? On basketball shoes? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, it's, it's, pop, it's a popular verse. A lot of young people use it. My son likes to put it on. My daughter, when she played volleyball, uh, in, in college, she would put that on her wrist. And because and, and she understood that if anything was going to happen, it was going to come from the hand of God. And so that's great, and that's wonderful. We love to quote it. But it's the most, probably one of the most quoted verses in the Bible. But I believe it's one of the most misunderstood verses. And, and let, if, can, you, can you hang with me just for a second? Okay. I believe we can accomplish... All that God wants us to accomplish through the strength that he'll provide to accomplish it, right? But when sometimes when we quote that verse, it means that I can set out to do anything and God will give me the strength to do it. Okay? That's true if it's in his will. Because God's strength is conditional upon his will. He will never give you the strength to accomplish something that goes against his will. Somebody say amen. That's good amen. preaching. Yeah. Because I've seen it happen. I've seen people run smack dab into the will of God. And they try to override the will of God. And say, well, my God shall get, will strengthen me. My God will strengthen me. He, he, he'll, he'll take care of me. He'll, let, he'll allow me to do it. And they are not in the will of God, and they mess it up every time. Because God will not strengthen what he does not will. Some people say God's going to strengthen me to get up and sing a song when they can't sing. God ain't going to do that. <laughs> Some people believe that that they can get up and preach, but yet they haven't been called to preach. But yet they'll say, God will strengthen me. No, he won't. If you're not called, if you're not in his will, you'll fall flat on your face. God can do anything, and you can do anything if he strengthens you to do it, and it's his will to do it. Hey, I, I, I can go on record and tell you, if it's his will, you can accomplish things that no one ever could think or imagine, but it comes from him strengthening you. It does. People ask us all the time, how in the world, and I, I'm not trying to say this to boast, but they say, how do you and Calray do it? How do you do what you do? How, how, how do you pastor a church full-time and have a ministry full-time? How do you go and preach revivals? I'll tell you why. Because we're in the center of God's will. And when we're in the center of His will, when we're in the center of His will, God will strengthen us. If I had to do what I do under my own power, I couldn't do it. A type 1 diabetic for 30-some years? Traveling, preaching, pastoring, ministry full-time, 80 to 100 hours a week. How do you do it, Brian? I'll tell you how I do it. God strengthens me. Why? Because I'm in his will. That's how you do it. And God will strengthen what he wills. He will not strengthen disobedience. He will not strengthen it. Just because you throw that verse out, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, doesn't mean it's going to work. You got to be in the center of his will. Somebody say amen. That's good. Yeah. My God shall satisfy. My God shall strengthen. 
But then our verse says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Now, again, this verse is misunderstood and misused because sometimes people use it as a blanket promise that God will take care of you and give you what you need regardless of how you're living. Now, this isn't a blanket certificate to say you can just quote and throw out this verse and say God's going to give you money to buy that lottery ticket. <laughs> I'm still preaching. Because see, what we consider a need is not a need. A lot of times the things we think we need are just wants. God will supply your need according to his riches and glory. But, but this, this, why Paul said what he said, you have to put this verse in context. The whole reason why Paul said this to the church at Philippi was for this reason. They sent him an offering to take care of his ministry, to take care of him while he was in jail, while he was broken, while he was bruised. They saw his need taken care of. And he said, because you took, you can read it right before this. He said, because you took care of me, God's going to take care of you. Now listen, it goes this way. If you take care of God's work, if you take care and you tithe, and you, I'm still preaching, if you tithe, if you give in the offering, if you take care of what God's given you responsibilities to take care of, then my God shall supply your need. Amen. 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 In fact, I, I'm telling you. I, I have not, I have never been in a need where God hasn't taken care of. And I do not worry if I ever have a need because I give what I'm supposed to give to him. I tithe, I do what I can and do my best to help ministries. And I believe because of God's word, he will take care of me. When I, I don't have to go out and blab it. I don't have to go out there and tell people what I, what I need. I just tell God. And God takes care of it. Amen? Amen? You're looking at me weird, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. Amen. Just try it. If you aren't tithing to your church, just try it for a month. Try it for a month. That's good preaching that day. Yeah. If you aren't tithing, we just, we just, people, people, I, see, see what it did? It just clamped up. It got tight all of a sudden. Why, why would it get tight? Why? Tithing is not something that God whips you over the back and says, you better do it. It's our form of worship to him. Listen, think about this math. This is great arithmetic. Everything he gives you is all from him, right? And all he wants is 10% back. I would rather live off the 90 <laughs> and with God's blessings as I would live off the 100 and him be nowhere around. That's good preaching. I, I, okay. I'll challenge you. I'll challenge you. I challenge people all across this nation. If you aren't tithing, and you start to tithe this coming Sunday, you keep a record of what you tithe. If God ever fails you, if God doesn't supply your need, you tell me how much you give in the offering, and I'll give it back to you. No one has ever took me up on that challenge. Why? Because God's word never fails. If you do what you're supposed to do, he will supply your need. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about if you want a new bass boat. I ain't going to give you that. No. I'm talking about your needs. Your needs. Amen. Well, that blesses you really good, doesn't it? But it's a principle. He gives, he, he gives to us based on obedience. The Bible says in the book of Luke, given it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, shall men give into your bosom. Habakkuk tells us, Malachi rather tells us, bring your tithes into the storehouse. And God will pour out the wind, who open the windows of heaven that you can't contain. That's just two verses. And I could go on and on. God will reward you for taking care of him. Amen. Amen. He will honor you. But, but, but look at this. It goes more than that. It's more than finances. 
But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We all have a need. Notice he didn't say needs. He said need. Because the greatest need of all of us is that we needed a Savior. Amen. 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 And Paul alluded to this in this verse. You just have to dig it out. He says, God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He says, my God shall supply all your need. That, that's pretty simple. That's exactly what it means. According to his riches and glory. That, the word according to means down from in the Greek. It means down from. Okay, so get that. Say down from. Down from. Down from. Okay. So God will supply your need according to what's according to me? Down. down from. His riches, that means his abundance, in glory. We know what glory means, right? That means from heaven. By Christ Jesus. The word by also means through. Okay? So let's do that again. But my God shall supply all your need according to, what's that mean? Down from his abundance in glory through Christ Jesus. So let's read it one more time. But my God shall supply all your need down from his abundance in glory through Christ Jesus. I don't think I have to be a great scholar and you don't have to be a great scholar to figure that out what that means. That means the greatest need was met whenever down from his abundance God sent his son <laughs> down to this earth and through his son Jesus Christ he met the man's greatest need and man's greatest need was that of a savior and aren't you glad tonight that God supplied our need down from his abundance and glory hallelujah no matter what you need tonight my God shall if you need a promise the Bible says in Genesis 49.10, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. If you need direction, my God shall. Psalm 37.23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. If you need comfort, Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you need healing, Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall shall run and not be weary and they shall walk I feel the Lord tonight and not faint if you need hope my God shall Isaiah 9 6 says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and, given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father and the prince of peace if you need assurance my God shall 1 Corinthians 15 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you need a revelation, my God shall. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Somebody shout, I'm busy preaching tonight. If you need consolation, Revelation 21 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And here's my favorite. If you need salvation, my God shall. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My God shall. Hallelujah. God. 
doesn't mean he'll think about it. It doesn't mean you leave him a message and he'll get back to you. It means he will. He shall. And he's going to do it. Praise God. My God shall. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. My God shall. Hallelujah. Your heads are bowed tonight. Levi, would you care to come to the piano, brother? Just play something softly. How many of you tonight, you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior? I don't know your heart. Only you do. If you've never asked the Lord through your heart to save you, you need Jesus. Would you say, Brian, I need the Lord. I need to be saved. I've given you the promise tonight. If you call on him, you shall be saved. It's a great promise. And if you need him tonight, would you raise your hands and pray for him? I need the Lord. I need Jesus in my heart. Pray for me. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one another? How many of the church would say, Brian, I, I, have, a, I have a need. I have a legitimate need. And I, I can't see any way out other than the Lord coming down and helping me. And I need Him to supply I need him to give me satisfaction. I need him to give me assurance. I need him to strengthen me. Well, friends, my God shall. But you got to come. Make sure you're in his will. Make sure that you've given it all to him tonight. Are you carrying it? Are you trying to? Or do you, have you said you've given it to him, but you really haven't? You're carrying a load that you don't need to carry. I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite you to pray. standing. Let's just sing a verse of that. All to Jesus I surrender. Sing.